Hi there, Smart Drivers. Rick with Smart Drive Test talking to you tonight about passing your driver's test first time. What do you need to do? What do you need to pay attention to? And what are the unexpected things that could potentially happen during the drive that could cause you to fail your driver's test? So let's talk about all of that and uh, get going here. A few people here, Bricks for Wheels, Corey is the moderator. Corey does an excellent job of getting up videos that I suggest you have a look at for further detail on uh, answers I give to your questions. My friend Tim is here uh, from Drive Smart BC. If you're in the province of British Columbia here in Canada, be sure to check out Tim's website if you're looking for anything related to traffic safety, policing, uh, road markings, engineering, uh, court cases, decisions, uh, those types of things. And as well, there's an excellent forum over at his website. So check all of that out. My friend Mallory is here, Baran, uh, you're amazing. Thank you so much for that. Uh, Ruben passed your driver's test. Congratulations on passing your driver's test. Although somebody honked their horn at you. <laughs> uh, we can talk about that. Uh, but you still passed your driver's test despite somebody getting aggravated as they do when they're driving. Uh, Rias is tuning in from Toronto. And Evan, you're talking about changing lanes in an intersection. This is related to a short that I released about not, absolutely not changing lanes in an intersection despite what might happen, that the intersection is blocked or there are obstacles in the intersection. If you're changing lanes in the intersection because there's obstacles or construction or whatnot, then you failed to observe correctly as you were approaching the intersection because I don't have very many hard rules when it comes to driving because driving is changing all the time. And this is one of the things that you are finding out as new drivers who are preparing for a driver's test and preparing for your driving career. It's always changing. It's always dynamic. And there's six factors of driving. The driver, the vehicle, the light, weather, the road, and the traffic there on the road. The vehicles and road users that make up the traffic. And this, these things are always in flux and always changing. And intersections, 40% of crashes happen at intersections. As well, intersections are the one place where vulnerable road users, pedestrians, cyclists, kids on skateboards and scooters, share road space. And that road space is demarcated, that for lack of a better word, that you know one lane of traffic goes and then the other lane of traffic goes or the turning lane goes and then pedestrians are allowed to go safely because we demarcate it with traffic lights and time. So if there's a place that you're gonna strike a pedestrian, if there's a place that you're gonna hit a cyclist, it's going to be in an intersection. So you should not be changing lanes while you're moving through an intersection. Change lanes before the intersection or change lanes after the intersection. And I'm going to, that's actually gonna be this week's video is talking more in depth about changing lanes and intersections and why we won't change lanes and intersections. Non, uh, we post video record on the channel. Um, yes, I will record this live stream and it will be posted here on the channel after the live stream is over for sure. Uh, Carl, uh, Ottawa, hello my friend. And Corey's put up the short video. Uh, Ruse, uh, let's talk wide turns. Thanks for the cone video past that, awesome. Uh, wide turns. If you're having difficulty going around the corners and your turns are too wide, often what's happening is you're going too fast. General rule for turns, eight to 12 miles an hour for right-hand turns and left-hand turns are kind of 15 to 30, depending on how big the intersection is. Tria, where are you in the world? Are you in the US or Canada? This is mostly directed towards the US but we do some stuff for Canada as well, but we can help you out with whatever state you're in, my friend. Liz, uh, the driver test officer said that even though I did everything well, he was not going to pass me. He said I, um, so Liz, you, you were unsuccessful on your driver's test, but the driving examiner didn't really give you much of a, well, that's really unfortunate. That's, that's terrible feedback. Uh, and a deep brief, they should really be giving you more information than that. So, so the way that we do it here is that uh, we spend some introductions and 
hello how are you where are you from what class of license are you going for are you going for your first license you're going for truck or bus uh, let us know that and where you're tuning in from in the world and uh, we can help you out uh, so we have a short presentation here and I'll do the presentation and then after the presentation we will spend the remainder of the hour working on uh, answering your questions about passing a driver's test starting a career as a truck or bus driver getting your CDL license or becoming a safer smarter driver Joella I am fine how are you my friend Tria you're in I think you there we go you're in North Carolina yes we can definitely help you there in North Carolina and most of what we're going to say today is going to help you pass your driver's test in North Carolina absolutely Brittany is tuning in from Ontario Kay, uh, hi everyone, how do I gain confidence in driving alone? I got my license in January, but still don't want to have courage to drive alone. I'm in New Jersey, by the way, awesome. And AO passed your driver's test yesterday with zero errors. Absolutely awesome, congratulations on that. That's awesome. So driving alone and getting gaining confidence. One of the things is to take somebody with you, whether that's a friend or whether you have a mentor, somebody that has experience that can go with you the other uh, strategy that you can put in place to gain confidence to drive is to drive earlier in the morning or later in the evening when there is less traffic and then that way we can help you out uh, YouTube channel yes I'm in Canada but most of the information that I give you here is directed towards the United States so we do that but we can help you pass and we have videos for New York State. I did some videos with Sam. Corey will put those up for you as well to have a look at and you can have look at that information. But if you have specific information about your state, we can definitely give you information about that. And just on that note of passing a driver's test first time, there are only three states that I'm aware of that do not parallel park. That is the state of California, state of Ohio, and the state of Maryland. In Maryland, you have to do a two-point reverse turn, which is backing around the corner. In Ohio, you have to do the Ohio maneuverability test, and those videos are up here on the uh, YouTube channel. And in the state of California, they get you to back along the curb for 50 feet. Now, Oregon can do this as well. They get you to back up 50 feet along the curb. So keep in mind that the maneuvers that you do for the driver's test and for 47 of the 50 states and the 10 provinces here, it's going to be parallel parking backing into a parking space and three point turns. At minimum, you have to be able to do those three maneuvers. Back into a parking space, three point turn, which is 180 degree turn, but you're gonna go across the road, you're gonna back up, and then you're gonna go in the other direction. So three point turn, and then uh, backing into a parking space and parallel parking. Those are the three that you have to do at minimum, and I will talk a little bit more about that in the presentation. The other maneuvers, that the examiner could potentially get you to do is up to the discretion of the examiner. And there's my friend Sam, Big Mac Sam, if you are in the Bronx, need to take your four hour driver ed course, look up Big Mac Sam, he can definitely help you out. Which company are you with Sam? Where would they find you uh, to take that online course with you to get going on their uh, learner's license there in the state of New York? Okay. Uh, Buify uh, failed three time road test on March the 8th in Abbotsford. Reasons right turn, speed, maintenance, shoulder checks. It's, it sounds like you got a lot of stuff going on there. Uh, did you take any driving lessons or work with a driving instructor? That's what I would suggest. All right, so I'm going to get going here on the presentation. And as I said, about 10 minutes, 12 minutes maybe through the presentation. And then after the end of the presentation, we will come back and I will spend the rest of the, the remainder of the hour answering any questions you have on passing a driver's test and starting a career as a truck or bus driver or being a safer smarter driver so let's get going with that so we're today we're talking about passing your driver's test first time and being successful with that and giving you the information you need to be successful uh, my name is rick august uh, if you're new to the smart drive test youtube channel i was a truck driver through the 1990s became a licensed commercial driving instructor in 1997. Most of my instructing career has been with big trucks. Uh, I did do some driver rehabilitation, working with people who had had brain injuries, lost limbs, driving cars with hand controls and those types of things. And uh, I have done quite a bit of new training as well with brand new drivers who are getting their first license. 
2006, I graduated from the University of Melbourne in Australia with my doctorate in legal history. While I was going to the university, I was driving buses for Greyhound and one of the regional bus lines there as well. So I have coach experience. And then in 2015, I started the online YouTube channel and the online business and I sell courses as well. So check out the Pass Your Driver's Test First Time course over at the Smart Drive Test website. You can pick that up for about $38 US guaranteed to pass your driver's test first time. You want to know more about me, you can check out my autobiography over at the Smart Drive Test website. New video this week on how to pick a mechanic because for those of you getting your license, getting a vehicle, or driving your parents' vehicle, you're going to have to get it fixed because unfortunately this, these things need to be maintained at least every 3,000 miles or 5,000 kilometers, you need to change the oil. Uh, you can take it to those quickie lubes and those types of things. You need to rotate the tires. You need to get new tires on these things. So these, this video will give you some great tips about how to choose a mechanic and somebody that you can trust and somebody that's going to give you a good price on getting your vehicle fixed. So have a look at that. The first thing you need to do in terms of getting your driver's license is pass your knowledge test. And your knowledge test is going to consist of signs, signals, and road markings, terminology, complex inter uh, ter terminology can include complex intersections, painted islands, slip lanes, those types of things as well. Right of way rules, it can talk about attitudes, it can talk about the driving task, and I talked about that in the introduction. The driving task is what you're up against when you're driving. And this includes the driver, the vehicle, the road, the traffic on the roadway, and the light and weather. All of that is part of what you're dealing with when you're learning to drive. So there's four components to any driver's test, regardless of where you are in North America. Speed management, space management, observation, and communication. And of those four, space management is the most important because if you're not near anything, it's less likely that you're going to hit something. And the other piece that's difficult for new drivers because there is a great deal of pressure to hurry up and go and get out of my way when you're driving. So you have to focus on what you're doing. And I'll talk about these four components, space management, speed management, observation and communication in more detail as we go through the presentation. One of the things, one of the strategies that I encourage new drivers to focus on at the beginning of their learning is to work on slow speed maneuvers. Work on your parallel parking, your three point turns, your reverse stall parking into a parking lot, two point reverse turn, backing around a corner and U-turns. These slow speed maneuvers are kind of 20% in and 80% out because you will learn how to control the primary controls, the steering wheel, the brake and the throttle and you will learn where your vehicle is in relation to other things. And once you get out on the roads, you will be a better driver. Unfortunately for many new drivers, this doesn't work. They just get out and they start driving around on residential roads and they miss this part. And you watch them in parking lots and they can barely back the vehicle up. So I strongly encourage you to spend some time doing slow speed maneuvers in a parking lot or in a low density traffic area where you can do these types of things. The requirements of the road test, holding the vehicle in the lane, so centered in your lane, not making wide turns when you're making right or left turns, observing and shoulder checking, and of the observation skills that you must have for a driver's test, shoulder checking is probably the highest. And I have released a video, a short, in the last couple of weeks, and actually in the past couple of months, I've had numerous students say to me that they haven't had to shoulder check or they weren't taught how to shoulder check, which just just boggles my mind because it is so dangerous. Why would you take a 2,000 pound vehicle moving at speed, move, change direction of that vehicle and not look in the direction you're going to move the vehicle? Not shoulder checking is to driving what not checking to see if a weapon is loaded is to gun safety. It's no different, it's just as dangerous. So the other requirements of the road test, responding and changing, uh, responding to changing driving conditions and not reacting, but looking down the road, understanding traffic patterns, and then predicting the individual actions of different road users and responding accordingly. And if you're not sure what to do at an intersection or in a particular traffic situation, simply stop. Some of the unexpected events that you're going to deal with 
on a driver's test are emergency vehicles. You must pull over immediately. If you don't, that is an automatic fail on a driver's test. Some of the other unexpected events, uh, Corey, I'll put the video up for you for 10 unexpected events on a driver's test, and that will help you out in case you meet these things or have these things happen on your driver's test. Because this is the other challenge of driving is that every time you go out and drive, it can be a little bit different. So you might go out and have one or two practice sessions and never actually meet a yellow light that you have to decide whether you're gonna to come to a stop for or you're going to proceed through. So think about that when you're learning how to drive. Abilities for your driver's test, two hands on the steering wheel, stopping in a line of traffic so that you can see the tires of the vehicle in front making clear contact with the roads, with the, with the surface of the road, which is approximately one vehicle length from the vehicle in front of you. Yellow traffic lights, Controlled intersections and uncontrolled intersections. Controlled intersections are stop signs, yield signs, and traffic lights. And then knowing the right of way at different intersections and in different traffic situations. For the most part, it's straight through traffic over turning traffic and it's right turning traffic over left turning traffic are the road rules. But remember, the right of way is always given, it's never taken. So after you've been driving for a while, I suggest that you go back and revisit the fundamentals, the parallel parking, the reverse stall parking, and those types of things. And again, all of that will help you out in preparation for your driver's test. If you are going to take driving lessons, you can take a whole class, so a set of 10 or whatnot, or a package or whatever the driving school has available. You can take individual lessons, or you can just take one mock driving test. And if I do say this to students, all the time that if you haven't taken driving lessons at least take one driving lesson and book that about three weeks out okay get as much uh, practice as you can practice in different vehicles and practice in different uh, environments but in the weeks the few weeks so say four weeks leading up to your driver's test stick to the same vehicle and work with the same person and that way you're going to be prepared for your driver's test on the day that it comes now, the good, the bad, and the ugly of driver's tests is that sometimes good drivers fail the driver's test because they something unexpected happens on their driver's test and they're unable to respond accordingly. So, practice driving test. Book this about three weeks out because driving schools are extremely busy, especially right now with post-pandemic reopening and trying to catch up with the backlog that's happened because of the closures for the last two years. Uh, you have seven to ten and book that seven to ten days before your actual driving test because if you fail your driver's test It takes a couple of weeks for you to kind of rebuild confidence to take that again So I can give you general information and really good information about passing a driver's test But I cannot give you specific information about the roads and areas that you're going to be driving on for your own driving test all right, so learn the basics. Remember, luck favors the prepared. <laughs> you must ma master the basic skills and prepare for the opportunity of passing your driving test and having a safe driving career. On the night before your driver's test, make sure you get a good night's sleep. Bring your documentation, so bring your driver's license to the DMV. Bring another piece of identification. Bring your glasses if you wear prescription glasses. Bring sunglasses if you need sunglasses to drive. And I know a lot of driving instructors say that you can't wear sunglasses when you're on your driving test, but that is a myth and it is not true. When you show up at the DMV back into the parking space, unless signs prohibit, it, prohibit you from backing in. And when you're on your driving test, keep going until the driving examiner tells you to stop. Because you may make a mistake and you get flustered by it and you'll make more mistakes. So you gotta make a mistake. If you do make a mistake, just take a breath and then carry on and focus on what you're doing. Don't stop until the examiner tells you to stop because the driving examiner, he or she, may not even have seen the error that you thought you made. So for you on the day of the driving test, your job is to take away the driving examiners to fail you. Nothing more, nothing less. You're going for pass, you're not going for perfection. So good luck in your driver's test. And remember, pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. All right.
So Corey's put up the video there on pass uh, practice during the time of day in and around the test center to pass your test. Absolutely. Crystal, how are you, my friend? And Wendy said, uh, just wanted to let you know I passed my air brakes uh, road test this past Thursday. Thank you for everything. Wendy, you are most welcome. Congratulations on passing your driver's test. That is awesome. Uh, Tyler got my new key fob for my Volkswagen. It cost me $100. Man who charged me by $80 got a good deal. Awesome. That's great that you get your fob working. Uh, 52, thank to you. I was able to pass my, my driving test with an 85. Congratulations, 52, on passing your driver's test. That is awesome. Really great to get your driver's license and get past that test. Uh, George, I'm from Philadelphia. I'm going for my driver's test in two more weeks, and I've been driving for eight months now. And George, it sounds like you're very ready for your driver's test. Uh, Buify, I uh, failed for the third time in Abbotsford. Right turn, speed maintenance, shoulder checks, 360 degree checks, yeah. Uh, Buify, I might suggest that you work with the driving instructor or you take the course over at the Smart Drive Test website that I mentioned. Uh, pass your driver's test first time guaranteed. You can pick that up for about $38 US. As well, you'll get the winter driving and defensive driving smart course. That's a bit of a brain camp there, uh, which will make you a safer, smarter driver. So guaranteed to pass your driver's test, you can pick that up over the Smart Drive Test website. And of course, if you have any questions uh, about your driver's test, about you know things that you encounter when you're learning how to drive, or you have questions, you can definitely email me, and I'll respond to you and help you out uh, with those questions. Uh, Brandon, I have my test Wednesday. How do I uh, beat the on-road anxiety during the test? Uh, Brandon, you really don't. <laughs> we all have fear. We're all anxious when it comes to driver's test. Just know that it's gonna happen, right? But remember to breathe for the purposes of your driver's test. In through the nose, out through the mouth. That breathing will cause your body to relax. It forces your body to relax. You're gonna have some anxiety, but again, do the things that I said when you go in for your driver's tests. Unless signs prohibit it, make sure you back into the parking space. When you go out, okay, I'll just, I'll just back up and then I'll come back to that piece. So, for everybody, again and again, and, and Corey will put up the video for you on the pre-trip inspection. I'm going to reshoot the, the pre-trip inspection video because I know it's too long. Be sure that you do a pre-trip inspection on your vehicle before you go down for the driver's test. If you're going with a driving school, be sure to ask the driving instructor if he or she did a pre-trip inspection on your vehicle because you don't want to get all ramped up for your driver's test, show up on the day of your driver's test, and the examiner will do a mini pre-trip. They're going to check the lights, they're going to check your license plate tags and make sure they're valid, they're going to check the registration, the insurance, they're going to check the horn, the brake lights, the turn signals, and they're gonna get in the vehicle. The seat needs, the passenger seat needs to be secure and the seat belt on the passenger side needs to work as well. Post COVID, make sure your vehicle is clean. So take it and wash it, okay? Make sure you have a shower, put on nice clothes. All this is important for the purposes of going down for your driver's test. Now, anxiety, okay, you're gonna be anxious. So back into the parking spot before you start. And then when the driving examiner comes out, they do their little mini pre-trip just follow their instructions and then left or right out of the parking lot, make sure that you signal whichever direction that you turn when you go out, okay? And then remember to breathe. I'll let it help you out. As well, Corey's put up the video on nine tips to overcome fear and anxiety, and that will help you out as well for the purposes of your driver's test, okay? Uh, John, sir, do you have a video of how to drive in downhill or in a valley? Uh, John, where in the world are you that you're driving downhill and in a valley? Uh, Charles, it is good to have driving lessons once a week for the 10 lessons. Yes, it is. Borlex, uh, pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. You're absolutely right. <laughs> Should be a driving tip. Thank you so much for that. Awesome. And it's busy right now. We have lots of people on the live stream. So if I don't get to your question, shoot me an email and I'll get back to you or just, you know, remind me and I'll go back up through the comments and I'll do my best to get through and answer all of your questions for you. Charlie, I have my test tomorrow, but due to a cancellation, I had to do it in a different place where I've never driven. How do I react best to this? Uh, Charlie, take your time. 
read the road signs, uh, show up an hour early. That way you can go for a little drive around the test center. Have a look at Google tonight. Put the address in where you're going to go. Figure out where the schools are. I know that for some places it's March break right now. Uh, and you won't have to do school speed zone signs, but figure that out whether you have school zones and those types of things and just look, you know, like five minutes from the test center and those types of things on Google Maps and then you'll have kind of an idea what you're up against and you'll know where schools and those types of things are and then in the morning show up an hour before your driver's test or two hours before your driver's test rather go for a drive around the test center and that'll give you a bit of familiarity with where you're going to be taking your driving test in the morning. Uh, Gomez, hey, you've been so helpful. Thank you for your tips. You are most welcome, my friend. Uh, Curtis, you can send me an email, rick at smartdrivetest.com, and I will help you out. Uh, Bluffer, one video especially to help me where you said the examiner makes their decisions not necessarily on a specific mistake, but how they view you as a competent or not competent driver. And Bluffer, that is exa exactly right. They don't judge you on one or two mistakes. Uh, so when you're going for your driving test, if you made a mistake, so for example, say you blew through a stop sign, but you did everything else right. You stopped completely, or you observed correctly, you looked at the traffic, you looked for the road users, you mapped out pedestrians and those types of things, and overall, your driving was really well. You good speed management, you adhered to the posted speed limit, you had good space management, you stopped in traffic at the correct position, you stopped at the correct position at intersections. So overall, your driving was really good, but you, you blew one stop sign. Driving examiners have some discretion. If they think that your driving overall was really good, but you had like one error, sometimes, I'm not saying all the time, but I'm saying that sometimes, they will overlook that. <laughs> and I had that very th very same thing happen to me when I moved to Australia and I had to take my truck driving license. I took my truck driving license and the guy, that, the examiner, uh, I kind of bulldozed into a roundabout because I had never had experience with roundabouts before, but nothing really happened. You know, the other drivers in the roundabout kind of had to slam on the brakes. But overall, he knew that I could drive a truck because I'd driven trucks before and I'd been teaching people how to drive trucks. So I he passed me on the driver's test. So know that for the purposes of taking your driver's test that overall you can demonstrate that you're a competent driver. One or two mistakes is not going to fail you, okay? Mac, how fast can you learn three-point turn and parallel parking? Haven't practiced my road test in two weeks. Uh, Mac, you could probably learn those two things in a couple of lessons easily, pretty easily. I mean, the three-point turn is fairly straightforward and Corey will put up the video on that is for you as well. Uh, parallel parking might take a little bit more to kind of get the knack of that, but again, there's a video here as well that'll help you out with that. Uh, Dream Lovers, live chat is really the best thing on YouTube. Yes, it is, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, Yeah, and they knew you weren't making that error again, as, as Corey just said. So, you know, you're going to make an error, but you only made it once. You're not repeating the same error over and over again. So, for example, if you're changing lanes and you're not signaling or looking, shoulder checking every time you're making a lane change, then, yeah, that's going to fail you. But if you only do it one time, they know you're anxious. They know that you don't have a high skill level. So, there is some discretion on the part of the examiners. Uh, Mallory, when you are home and you have some free time, practice learning how to drive with a piece of paper or a toy car. Yes, you can do that, especially for right of way and different kinds of intersections. Uh, Two-way stop sign and four-way stop sign intersections for the purposes of a driver's test. Make sure that you know the difference between those two things. Borlex, uh, just one question. If I'm at an intersection and the light is a green arrow, do I still treat it as if it's a regular green while looking at the traffic ahead? What diff what's difference? Um, so generally Borlex green arrows mean that you have to turn in the direction of the green arrow and that if the way is clear, you have the right of way and can proceed. So if it's an advanced green, then you can proceed to turn left. Okay. So, so as long as the way is clear. 
Tyler driving drivers are impatient they pass me doing 70 kilometers an hour in a 50 zone they can have an accident somewhere else <laughs> absolutely Tyler uh, that's exactly the way that you have to think about it is, is that they can go and have their crash somewhere else for sure uh, Brittany I have a in vehicle driving for transit job uh, this is before any training or interview I'm guessing it will be just in regular vehicle or and to see if I know the rules of the road any tips uh, Brittany the so is is this for a transit company because if it's for a transit company they not but might not put you in a passenger vehicle they may actually put you in a transit bus so um, do you have any experience uh, I'm guessing oh this is before training okay so you don't have your bus license yet um, yeah uh, okay that's a that's a tough one uh, do you have any did they give you any direction about what you're doing for the purposes of this road test um, because I, it's really tough for me to just kind of say what they what they're gonna do I don't know I've never I've never heard that before uh, Charles I live in Brooklyn there are a lot of parking but less space do you shoulder check when doing parallel parking uh, Charles yes you have to do a 360 degree scan you don't you have to shoulder check obviously uh, when you're gonna parallel park but you you know pull up the rear of your, the two vehicles is in line and then you're gonna do a 360 grand put your signal on put the vehicle into reverse immediately and then you know look back through the back window and park the vehicle but Corey will put the video for you on parallel parking and that'll help you out there in uh, the borough of Brooklyn all right what else okay so you're doing it in a different place we answered that for you um, excellent all right so uh, what was so just bear with me here one sec okay so Brittany nothing more just to come in for the vision test driver test on computer and in vehicle test all right okay so basically that's so then uh, Brittany if you haven't done any training then I suspect you're right that it's in a vehicle uh, in a passenger vehicle that they're gonna get you to do that I would suggest uh, Corey can you put up the video on the mock drivers test the driver's license test video and uh, that'll help you out Brittany in terms of your observation so four components to any driver's test as I talked about in the presentation space management speed management observation and communication and this Brittany is as well what you're gonna need to do for the purposes of going for the test drive with the city transit so space management stop in traffic so that you can see the tires of the vehicle in front making clear contact with traffic so essentially what you're doing is you're stopping back one vehicle length from traffic in front of you stopping at the correct stopping position at controlled intersections so before the stop line before the crosswalk or sidewalk and if those two conditions don't exist then just before entering the intersection Th two to three second following distance at minimum don't enter an intersection you can't clear so for example if the traffic is backed up in the into the intersection then you have to wait until the intersection clears and then proceed through the intersection so space management is the most important and for most of you if you want to be a safer smarter driver you really should be driving and controlling space around your vehicle with the gas pedal not the brake the only time that you should be using the brake is to bring the vehicle to a stop slow the vehicle for turns or controlling speed on downhills if you're touching your brake all the time because you're trying not to you know run into the back end of the traffic in front you're too close and you're not managing speed uh, space well around your vehicle speed posted speed limit or the flow of traffic whichever is less for the purposes of your driver's test and probably for your road test as well Brittany observation looking far down the road you're gonna have a scanning pattern so it's far down the road in check your centimeter far down the road check your instrument panel far down the road wing mirror on the left far down the road wing mirror on the right that's your scanning pattern and many new drivers ask me about 
what is the speed on this on the driver's test if I go five miles an hour am I gonna fail my driver's test no you're not unless you're like five or ten or completely crazy in terms of how much above or below the speed limit you are you should be adjusting your speed limit every 8 to 15 seconds in keeping with that scanning pattern because every 8 to 15 seconds you should be checking your instrument panel so you're adjusting your speed so that's your forward scanning pattern shoulder checking every time you turn the vehicle or do lane changes or move sideways shoulder checking is 90 degrees in the direction that you're moving the vehicle because there is a blind area right here that your mirrors cannot see into this is why you have to shoulder check in a healthy adult, our peripheral vision is 180 degrees. So if we're moving our head 90 degrees, our peripheral vision is now taking in this over here. And our peripheral vision is attracted to light and movement. So there's something over there like a bicycle. So for example, we're gonna turn right and there's a bicycle there and we're like, oh. And then we look, we catch it, we look forward and then we look again and we're like, oh, there's a bicycle there. I have to adjust my speed so that I have a safe distance from the cyclist. That's why you're shoulder checking. So shoulder checking on turns and lane changes, you need a minimum of two shoulder checks. When reversing, 360 degree scan around the vehicle, you're going to look through the back window. Yes, you can use your mirrors. Yes, you can use your backup camera. And I had this question today, it was interesting because there's kind of, if you watch some of my videos, if you watch a lot of my videos, at the beginning you'll hear me say, you can't use backup cameras because two years ago, three years ago, when backup cameras first started coming out on vehicles, you couldn't use them. The DMV was covering them up. In some places still will, but it's rare. It's not very often they're, they're gonna cover up the backup cameras. You can look at a backup camera, but you have to use it the way you use your mirrors. You just kind of glance at it, right? And I love backup cameras. I think they're great, especially if you're backing into a parking space, they're gonna help you to get straight. But you need to be looking out the back window for the majority of your reverse. You can check your backup camera, you can check your mirrors, okay? So that's observation. And then communication is the last piece of it. The position of your vehicle on the roadway is the most important way that traffic communicates with other road users. It's the most important way that you communicate with other road users. If you're in the left-hand lane, there's a very high probability that you're going to turn left. If you're in the left-hand lane and you don't turn left, you, but you go straight or turn, make a right turn, now you're being completely unpredictable on the roadways and significantly increases your chances of being involved in a crash. So the position of road users. If we map and scan road users on the roadway, it's going to allow us to understand traffic patterns. It's going to help us to predict the individual movements of different road users. So for example, if there's a pedestrian standing near a crosswalk, there's a good chance that that pedestrian is gonna cross the road. So the next one is lights and signals. Horn, use your horn sparingly because in this day and age, it's seen as a sign of aggression. Hand gestures, if you're not sure what another road user is doing, particularly a cyclist or a pedestrian or whatnot, get eye contact and use your hand signals and use all five fingers. Don't tell them they're number one, especially on a driver's test. You won't be successful. All right. Edwin, I want to thank you for educating me on how to drive. Edwin, you are most welcome, my friend. So happy that we can help out. Uh, Tim, all the best. Have a great dinner and we'll talk to you soon, my friend. Ashton, I passed my driving test today, but I got six points on the parking portion. Not sure if it's standardized everywhere, but if you got over six, you instantly fail. The actual driving part was good though. Okay. Okay, so it's not uh, six points. Uh, actually, Ashton, most driving tests in most states is 30 points. You're allowed 30 points total. Now, unless you're in <laughs> Ohio, where the Ohio maneuverability test and the driving portion are two separate things. So was this for the Ohio maneuverability test? Is that where you got your six points? Uh, taps, if I, w if I was in a controlled intersection turning left, would I need to check everywhere before turning? No, you need to check forward the oncoming traffic and you need to shoulder check left before you make the turn, okay? Uh, Brittany, try not to stress, stress, but I want this job. <laughs> I hear you, Brittany. I've been there where I've, I've wanted the job and had to go for a driving test and, you know, our, our road test in 
to get the job and it's stressful. Uh, I went for a bus company. The bus company that actually that I ended up working for in Australia was Moorlands was the name of the bus company, but they contracted to Greyhound and I had to do a road test with them before I started driving. And the first bus that I drove was, you know, it was no big deal. It was an automatic. You put your foot on the gas pedal and away the thing went, you know, just get it around corners and those types of things. Of course, it was a little weird because I was driving on the other side of the road. <laughs> when I spent most of my career commercial driving uh, on the right side of the road. But the next bus that they gave me <laughs> was a synchromesh transmission and you had to push the clutch all the way to the firewall, which I did not know. And I had a, one heck of a time trying to get this bus to get going because um, I drove non-synchromesh transmissions for most of my career. And you only push the clutch in this far, not all the way to the firewall. Um, and uh, despite the fact that I had some difficulty driving the second bus, they still hired me. I still got to go to work for them. And this bus, uh, you can read about it actually in my autobiography, uh, was my absolute nemesis. And I had this bus on one occasion a few couple of months after I started working for them. And I stalled it in an intersection in Aubrey, which is the, the town on the state line between Victoria and New South Wales. And, you know, you got 45 people on the bus and they're like, can you even drive this bus? You're, why are we stalled in an intersection? <laughs> and it was quite by accident one day I was driving it. And, of course, even some of the other bus drivers couldn't tell me what I was doing wrong, that I pushed the clutch all the way to the floor. And I realized that that's what you needed to do on this bus. Because if you didn't push the clutch all the way to the floor to shift the gear, then all the lights and buzzers and everything would be going off in the dash. And it was very embarrassing. <laughs> Uh, D, I drove buses for 30 years. Now I'm a car driving instructor. Uh, D, welcome to Smart Drive Test. Thanks for letting us know. Uh, D, did you drive coaches, transit buses, school buses? What kind of buses did you drive, D? Uh, Wilmera, uh, what got me were the wide turns, but thanks to your videos, I passed one portion of the test. Going soon for the other portion, nervousness. And yes, just remember to breathe in through the nose, out through the mouth, and that will help you out with uh, passing your driver's test. Arthur, uh, whereabouts are you in Ontario? I'd like to take some lessons with you. Uh, Arthur, I'm actually not in Ontario, but uh, we can definitely help you out. I know a few driving instructors in Ontario that I could refer you to. So let me know where you're from and we can definitely help you out. I'm actually in British Columbia. So uh, Mallory, even though I am a smart passenger, I really enjoy learning the skills needed for driving. And uh, Mallory, we certainly appreciate you being here. Uh, awesome questions, awesome contribution to the live stream and smart drive test. Uh, D started driving school buses and training then city buses. Uh, so yeah, you've had a long career of uh, driving buses and those types of things. Uh, I'm sure you've had some interesting experiences with both school buses and city buses. <laughs> Ashton, I'm in Michigan and the instructor said I could get a maximum of six points on the parking portion before I failed. According to her, I narrowly passed. And Ashton, you know something, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, you passed. And that's all you need is the pass. And uh, that's what I say to students. You can work on perfection the rest of your driving career. All you need to do is pass your driver's test. And that's really awesome that you did. And actually, I'll have to look into that because I hadn't heard that before that there was, it was separated into the drive and into the parking in the state of Michigan. That's the first time I'd heard that. Uh, Taps, do you have any reference points before parking in a three spot? in a parking lot um, oh in a spot in a parking in a parking lot oh, okay so taps yes we have um, better reverse stall parking Corey will put that video up for you and that'll definitely help you out and give you the reference points for parking well but essentially when you if you can pull past the parking spot so you are so the space that you want to go into, you want to go one and a half spaces ahead so that you're in line with one and a half spaces and then pat, come around the corner and drive our back into the space. So D, retired TTC in Toronto. Those were the most interesting years. <laughs> I'm sure they were driving transit bus in Toronto. I'm sure that was definitely interesting. Uh, Gazette. Gazelle, uh, I love your videos. I am in Tampa, Florida, and welcome to the live stream. Thanks for tuning in. That is awesome. Love Florida. Love helping out and uh, getting students um, their driver's license in the Sunshine State. Nathan, you're in California. Love California. 
Gazelle, I have to appear for my driving license test and watch your videos religiously. Thank you so much. You are most welcome, my friend. All right, Arthur, uh, that's wonderful. Please do. I'm in Toronto. Okay, awesome. Arthur, uh, send me an email if you could. Rick at Smart Drive Test and we'll definitely help you out. So one of the things I want to caution you on for those of you who live in states and provinces where we're just getting spring again is, is that the road lines are completely washed off the roadways. And I am not happy about this environmentalism and the paint that they're now using to paint road lines on roadways because now we have to do it every year. We have to repaint the lines on the roadways every year because we're using paint that is not, it's, it's not petrol, petroleum based paint and therefore it's not, there's no longevity to it. And I just got back from Calgary today, which is six hours from where I live. My Tracy's parents live there and we went down to give them a hand and do some work around the house. There were, there were roads in Calgary that have absolutely zero zero road markings on them and it was the same coming back on the trans canada highway from calgary uh through to sycamus in british columbia there were roads where there were absolutely zero road markings and on a highway it's incredibly dangerous when you don't even know uh if you're on two lane roads because i don't know if any of you how many of you've been on the crazy trans canada highway through the mountains but it goes from one minute you're on four lane, the next thing you're on a passing lane, and the next minute you're on two lane traffic. And you know, you really gotta be on your game when the road is changing all the time. <laughs> you're like, am I in the right lane? Am I on the right side of the road? Can I pass here or not? <laughs> and uh, road markings become very instrumental in knowing uh, what the road is doing. And when, you know, this time of year in the spring, uh, they've been all scraped off because A, we're using paint that has no longevity and there's just no road markings. I mean, it is beneficial that they've put rumble strips on many of these, but wow, those road markings, that's tough, okay? Corey, uh, it's like um, my experience with City Transit, they'll be testing your initial ability comfort with large vehicles. I also recommend searching how to drive an RV on YouTube, Britannia. Excellent, thanks for that advice, Corey. Uh, Liz, thanks to your videos, it did pass my G2. Now on April 7th, I'll be going for my full G at Port Union again. Any tips I could follow, any advices? So Liz, the G the G is gonna be almost identical to the G2 test. They're gonna be doing looking for exactly the same things. Space management, speed management, observation, and communication. They're just gonna be looking for a bit more comfort level in terms of you're driving when you're on the driver's test, but all of the same rules apply and whatnot. They're just looking to make sure that you're comfortable. And the other thing with the G is, is that Ontario has temporarily postponed any of the slow speed maneuvers. So you're not required to do the parallel parking, the three point turns and those other types of things. You will need to back into the parking space at the test center, but for the rest of it, they've um, temporarily suspended that for the time to try and catch up on the driver's test and I'll, as well my understanding with the the full g is that it's very short and you have to be there at a very specific time uh they're very regimented i think it's only like six or eight minutes that they take you out so just you know all of those pieces in place that you need and you passed your uh, G2 first time because of the videos. Awesome. That's great. Um, Wilmera, uh, any other tips? Well, wide turning. I know you said reduce speed. Yes, reduce speed. Do the slow speed maneuvers. So go and practice your parallel parking. Do your three point turns. If you can get some of those uh, three foot, one meter tall pylons and do a bit of work in the parking lot, all of that is going to help you to, con to know where your vehicle is in space and place and in relation to other things. And those slow speed maneuvers will improve your wide turns and whatnot, okay? And as well, do some turns at slower speeds in residential areas and whatnot, and all of that will help you with your wider turns, okay? And last, the last piece on correcting your wider turns is to make sure that you look where you want the vehicle to go. The vehicle will go where you're looking, so make sure you're looking in the right place. 
Tiffany, uh, my husband and I have our road test April 6th and our instructor did not teach us anything compared to what we learned from your video. Should we take lessons with someone else uh, in New York City? Uh, Tiffany, uh, should you take lessons with somebody else? You've got April 6th, so you've only got another week. I would simply practice what uh, the instructor taught you. Take the, ex the extra information from my videos. Uh, look at Big Mac Sam's uh, videos and information as well. He can help you out because he's actually there in New York. Uh, but, you know, incorporate what you learned on the videos with the shoulder checking, the observation. Know that shoulder checking is paramount and what you learned with the instructor. But no, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't recommend you taking other lessons with driving instructors just because you're so close to your driving test. But, um, you know, you're gonna be fine because you're watching the videos, you're getting information from other places and those types of things and you can incorporate that into your driving. So I think you're gonna be just fine with what you've done already. So good luck on your driving test there on the 6th of April. Leonardo, uh, thanks so for your driving tips. Helped a lot. Hello from Montreal. Hello, hello. Envy, uh, first G2 coming up on Tuesday in Brantford. How, are, how strict are they when it comes to new drivers as opposed to those taking the G? Uh, G2, they know that you're not going to have a high level of skill. So, you know, they're looking for you to be competent, no doubt. Uh, so, you, you know, you and you're going to have to do the slow speed maneuvers in the province of Ontario there for your G2. So your parallel parking, reversing into a parking space, and your three-point turns, controlling. <coughs> Excuse me. Controlling your vehicle in traffic, space management, speed management, observation, and communication. Corey will put up the video on the mock driver's test. Have a look at that, and all of that will apply for your G2 test. Okay. Uh, Kent went to move to the left lane to make a left turn when you're at a three lane road during the school bus road test. Um, okay, during the school bus road test when you're three lane road to make a left turn. Uh, you want to do that within one block of the intersection where you're going to turn is when you want to get over into the left hand lane. Okay. Taps, do all DMVs use the same route on the drive test? No, they don't, especially when it comes to the passenger vehicles. They're going to have a number of different test routes that they can do. If you get into the higher class vehicles, then there's going to be less routes they're going to be able to take you on. But when it comes to the passenger vehicles, they've got a lot. My friend Sam, uh, scroll back up here to Tiffany Fields' question about her brother. Or sorry, her husband and herself are taking their driver's test there in New York on the 6th. And uh, they took some driving lessons with an instructor. And um, they wanted to know if they should take lessons with another instructor. Maybe you can comment on that for me, Sam, if you don't mind. Okay. Ba -ba -ba. Slays, I have my road test tomorrow. And do you have any advice? Yes, Slays. Scroll back through the live stream here and look at the four different components of the driver's test. So space management, make sure that you're not near anything because if you're not near anything, you're not going to hit anything. Stop in traffic so you can see the tires of the vehicle making clear contact with the pavement. That's approximately one vehicle length behind the traffic in front of you. Stop at the correct stopping positions at controlled intersections before the stop line before the crosswalk or sidewalk. And if those two conditions don't exist, then just before entering the intersection. Don't enter an intersection you can't clear because traffic is backed up. You have to wait for traffic to clear. Know the difference between two-way stop signs and four-way stop sign intersections. Speed, the posted speed limit or the flow of traffic, whichever is less. You have a scanning pattern that you're repeating every eight to 15 seconds, which includes your instrument panel. Therefore, you should be adjusting your speed every eight to 15 seconds, okay? Most of the time, you're in, if you're in residential areas and those types of things, you're not gonna get up to speed, right? But do the best you can. Don't dawdle, because being overly cautious on a driver's test is as bad as driving too fast. So observation, forward scanning pattern, two shoulder checks for every lane change, or anytime that you change direction of the vehicle. When you're reversing, 360 degree scan. 
looking out through the back window, you can use your mirrors, you can use your backup camera for the purposes of reversing. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Sam, that's absolutely correct. Thank you. And the last piece is communication. Make sure that you communicate effectively with other traffic when you're driving, using your turn signals, the position of your vehicle on the roadway, uh, if you're not sure what another road user is, is doing, get eye contact, use your hand signals, and in a last ditch attempt, use your horn and just tap it lightly because in this day and age, horns are seen as a sign of aggression. Okay. Crystal, uh, I'm great. Uh, my trip to Mammoth was great. Uh, did snow tubing and a little bit of hiking. Awesome. That sounds like a great trip. Uh, envy uh, two, two for the maneuvers like parallel parking reverse parking am I allowed to make adjustments if I know something isn't right <coughs> envy you are allowed one pull up on a maneuver so if your parallel parking isn't quite right you can pull up once and then you are not assigned demerits if you do more than one pull up and you keep adjusting it then they're going to start a assigning uh, demerits so know that for the purpose of your driver's test uh, epic great tips by fellow smart drivers if you got used to driving school vehicle you can use it by yourself or with the instructor provided you're able to get a road test package service to pass the driver's test that is correct that's excellent information epic so if you take driving lessons with a school you can pay to take their vehicle to the driving test. And if you've been practicing primarily in the driving school vehicle, then yes, use their vehicle for your driving test because that's what you're used to. That's what you're familiar with and comfortable with. So take, spend a little bit extra money, pay the driving school to use their vehicle. If you're gonna be using your vehicle for the driver's test, make sure that you do the pre-trip inspection to make sure that it's gonna pass the mini pre-trip and it's going to be safe for the purposes of your driver's test clean it and those types of things uh, for your driver's test but make sure that you're practicing in your vehicle in the days leading up to the driving test so you're fully comfortable with it okay uh slays uh do you do those uh apply to closed courses as well yes all of those tips apply to clo closed courses as well uh as being out on the road they're looking for the same skills and abilities in a closed course as they're looking for when you go out on the roadway and whatnot. Destiny, I am not English speaker. There is a lot of sentences I can understand in and CDL manual. Can you help me? Thanks. Uh, okay, we can we can help you with that for sure. I'm uh, you need to send me an email, Destiny, uh, and we can work it out through email. Okay, so Rick at SmartDriveTest.com and we'll definitely help you out. Uh, Sam says definitely go with another driving instructor. I had students that came to me because they didn't like my co-worker He was more militant some students like the way he teaches He actually made some females cry. So they came to me. <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, that's not good when you're making people cry when you're teaching them how to drive that is that's that's not good driving instruction <laughs> uh, You should try and curb that a little bit so you're at least a little bit, you know, I mean you can be a kind of a a hard ass when you're teaching people how to drive but <laughs> not that hard <laughs> when you're learning how to drive all right so we're at the top of the hour again if you want to check out pass your driver's test first time guaranteed to pass your driver's test as well as a bonus we throw in both the winter and defensive driving smart courses you can check that over out over at the smart drive test website pick that up for about 38 bucks and if you have any questions, my email is there. Corey, just put it up, rick at smartdrivetest.com. I'll do what I can to help you out and give you some advice. Uh, and uh, we'll give you recommendations for driving schools and what driving schools you can go to as well. Destiny will definitely help you out with uh, your CDL there and see what we can do. So Tiffany, uh, driving instruction recommendations in Brooklyn and uh, help you out with that. Shanice, Shanice uh, what are some of the best ways to truly memorize road markings as well as street signs? I'm taking my driving permit soon and really need help in this area. Uh, one of the ways is to draw them out on flashcards and that will help you out and uh, have a look at that. 
The other way is to go on and do some of the practice driving test questions here on the internet and those will help you out with your road signs and road markings as well. Okay. Uh, epic, nice to hear that Sam and I'm planning to do the same or my younger brother can afford driving school and their road test to pass the driving test first time. Awesome, Destiny, yes. So Destiny, if you have any questions at all, definitely send me an email, especially if you've purchased some of the courses over at the Smart Drive Test website and I'll do what I can to help you out and be successful. Okay, uh, awesome. So we'll leave it there for tonight. Thank you very much for your questions. You passed your driver's test in the last couple of weeks. Congratulations on passing your driver's test. You have a driving test coming up in the next week or so. Good luck on that. And remember, pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. Have a great night. Bye now.